There's a two times some swimmers may be looking to beat. Lane number one, Chris Carroll Bremer of Germany, 22 years old and a student at Michigan State in the United States. He placed first in the final B of the 92 Olympics. Lane two, Ken Ngunakin of Turkey. He's 21 years old and placed fourth in the final B of this event during the 1992 Olympics. And lane number three is occupied by Rafael Zukala of Poland, 22 years old and a new European champion of the 100 meter butterfly. In lane number four, the favorite, Francis Frank Esposito. He's 22 years old and is European champion in this event, so we'll look for him to defend his title. And lane number five, Denis Pankratov of Russia, a specialist in the butterfly. He took silver in the 100-meter butterfly this year. He's 19 and took first at the 1991 Junior European Championships in the 100-meter butterfly. Lane number six, 23-year-old Martin Herman of Germany. He placed third in the final B of this event at the 92 Olympics. Keep an eye out on him. He took the bronze in the 89 European Championship in the 100-meter butterfly. And Konrad Galka of Poland in lane seven. He's 19, and his best time this year, two minutes, 1.02. Last but not least, in lane eight, 20-year-old Jan de Fabrique. His best time this year was two minutes, 0.63. He's French. Warming up there. Getting used to the water. This is always a crucial time for mental preparation. Make sure the goggles are on right. And there you see the lineup. The favorite, Esposito. And the swimmers take their mark. Off to a good start. Two hundred meter butterfly. There they go. Looks like a good start there. And they're off. And the favorite is Esposito, but there's someone else leading there. That's looks like he's looking over to see where he's at there. Strong arms. But someone there in the black caps leading that looks like uh, the Russian, Pankratov. He's 19 and he's leading. He's leading, looks like he's leading over Esposito by a whole body length. Strong stroke. Pankratov took silver in the 100 meter butterfly this year and took first place at the 1991 Junior European Championships in the 100 meter butterfly and he is definitely leading. Esposito, who is the, was the favorite here, let's see if he catches up. But he looks like he's gonna be hard to catch here, that Pankratov. Uh, he's already at 111, 112, he's going really fast. It looks like he's gonna win. They got a, they've got another 50 meters to go after this, after he touches here at the end. And yes, it looks like he's got it. He's, he's going for it. And dolphin kick there. And yep, he's gone. He's going, going, and he is gone. And that is Pankratov of Russia. Yes, he's gone, all right. And where is Frank Esposito? It looks like he might be a body link behind him. And his arms are getting a little tired there. Looks like they're not coming out as strong, but he's still going for it. And he might be breaking a record. Not quite. One second off. But he almost broke a European record. The European record. And the winner is Dan Panklatov of Russia. Excuse me, that's Denis. I said Denis, excuse me. Denis Pankratov of Russia. He just won the gold. The fifth gold for Russia.
And he was definitely the one to look out for. There's Frank. Hey, Silver, Frank Esposito of France, 158.66. Third place, Germany. The women's 200 meter individual medley. And um, the favorite here looks like it's Daria Shmelova of Russia, 16 years old. Let's look out for her. Lane four. We've got somebody there leading in the black cap. It looks like Germany, maybe. Yes, it's Germany. It looks like Daniela Hunger is leading there. She's 21 years old. And they're going into the backstroke there, and Germany is still leading. Daniela Hunger. That backstroke is nice. Well, well done there. It doesn't look like she has any close contenders at the moment. And still have got uh, two other disciplines to go after this first 50 here. Second 50, excuse me. There we go. Into the press stroke. And she is leading. And you can hear the crowd going crazy, cheering her on, cheering them all on. It looks like she might be getting some competition there from lane four. It looks like lane four and lane five are both coming up real close there. And they touch on the breaststroke and turn around for the second half of that. Free style. Daniela Hunger still leading, but she looks like she's got a little competition coming from uh, lane four. Lane five. Possibly lane five. And yes, she's pulling it. And she is the winner. Daniela Hunger of Germany at 215.33. And Great Britain. Came in second, 216.90. And Silvia Pereira of Spain, 24 years old. 217.06. And we'll be back with more Sheffield on your sport. The first European Championships. And upcoming the men's 50 meter freestyle. Here we've got Alexander Popov swimming against Frenchman Christophe Calfayan. And here in lane one, starting with the lineup here, Mike Fibbins of Great Britain. He's 25 years old. And lane two you, from the Ukraine, Vladimir Chenko. He's the oldest, he's 28 years old. And in lane three, Raimundos Maziolis of Lithuania. He's 21 years old. And of course, we've got here Alexander Popov of Russia. 22 years old, took the gold in the 100 meter freestyle event just a few days ago. First place in 1991, European Championships in the same event. And the Frenchman, Christophe Calfayan, 24 years old. In lane six from Great Britain, Mark Foster. He seems to be real popular. Crowds cheering for him loudly, enthusiastically. He's in his, on his home turf. Lane seven, Vladimir Predkin, Russian. 24 years old. And lane eight, Mark Pinger of Germany. He's 23 years old. Mm, 
all stretching out there, getting ready for the race. Crowds motivating them. And the swimmers take their mark once again without Mike Fibbins of Great Britain. It looks like a clean start. There they go, and they are off. Look at them go. They are off. All that water splashing. And in the lead, let's see who, if we can see who it is here on all that, in all that uh, splashing water. You can't really tell. It looks like Popov. Raimondos Mazioles. It's going to be real close. It's going to be up. 22.27, lane number four, and it's Alexander Popov once again. Alexander Popov of Russia once again. 22 years old, he took the gold in the 100 meter free event just a few days ago, and here he goes again, taking the gold in the 15 meter freestyle event. Frenchman, Christophe Calfayan, 24 years old, 22.39, and Popov did beat his time, his best time in 1993. 22.27 championship record in third place. Raimondos Masiolis of Lithuania. The time of 22.44. There you have it, Alexander Popov. Gold for Russia. 22.27, a championship record. He Here in Sheffield, we've got five laps of the 800 meters freestyle final. And it's a great race it's between Irene Dolby from Norway in lane number five and Jana Henke from Germany in lane number three. That's where the gold medal we think is going to come from. But still in the race, Drew, is Bilicova from Czechoslovakia in lane number four. After this turn, there'll be 200 meters to swim and it's going to be a battle. It's the full lineup. Bleakhaus from Netherlands in one quarter from Romania in two. Henke, who's lying in second place from Germany in three. Spikalova from Czechoslovakia was the fastest qualifier from the heats in four. Dolby leading there. Well, she was leading just from Norway in lane five. Sarah Hartcastle of Great Britain in six. Cornelia Seas from Germany in seven. And Malin Nielsen in lane eight for Sweden. But the battle is at the front of the race. They are the white cap of Norway and no cap for Henke of Germany. Now what happened was in the first 200, the swimmers just kept uh, on their pace, nothing broke, everybody together, and just swam the first 200 very comfortably. At 400, Dolby started to put on the pressure and tried to burn off the opposition, but Henke decided to stay with her, and it looks as if Henke now is just beginning to do her own piece of pressure swimming. She's picked up the tempo, it's a rather untidy stroke there, very straight arm and low, but Dolby doesn't want to let go of this 800 title, very easily and she's sticking with the German swimmer and what a great competitor Dolby is as Drew said she won this 800 two years ago she doesn't want to lose that Henke now with two laps to go well it looks like she's got this race in control who can tell though because Dolby has got the stronger of the two in terms of finishing Spitzel over in lane four well she made a good effort the last 100 but she's been dropped Henke really piling on the pressure now. Dolby trying to stay in touch. That's the untidy stroke of Henke, but it's been very effective in this race. There you can see Dolby with the white cap on. They're turning now. They'll turn together. Henke just in front, and there's just under 50 meters to go. Dolby beginning to move up now, but has she left it too late? At the end of this kind of race, what you need to have is strength, is courage, and a leg kick to bring you back into the race. And there you see the white water from both swimmers, but it looks as if Dolby might have a little bit more strength. Henke very close to the lane rope. It's Henke, Jana Henke from Germany, bronze medalist in the Olympic Games, trying to add the gold European. Henke has just drawn away from Dolby in the last 10 meters. 8.32.47. That's a great swim from Jana Henke. The time is unimportant. It's the gold medal that she's looking for. It's Dolby in second place for Norway. An excellent swim from the 22-year-old Norwegian trying to defend that, Olymp uh, that European Championship. And Olga Spichalova from Czech Republic in 8.36. Looks as if she might have taken the bronze. And a brave swim by Sarah Hardcastle. You can confirm there. 8.33.77 for her. Picks up her second medal at these championships and has lost two titles at these championships. So the German machine moves on. And Henke, who must have been one of the favorites for that race. In fact, Drew, that was your favorite, wins the gold medal. My favorite, Irene Dolby, came in second. So that's uh, another beer I owe Drew Gordon. 
but I think that's what we're even now, Drew, aren't we? There's two races each. They're really powered out in the heats, and we've not seen that. You know, when they're so good in their own country, it, it often means that they take it easy in the heat, and of course that costs them. So the lineup, David, of 100 bike stops. Well, in lane one, we're going to have Ralph Brown from Germany. He's the European junior champion. He's 20 years of old age now, so he's no longer junior. There is the backstroke, 200 backstroke champion of Europe, 22-year-old Selkov from Russia, goes in lane two. In lane three, Tino Weber from Merzburg, Germany, Olympic finalist and German champion, 92 and 93. And the last medal he won was in the tournament back at the European Championships in 89. There's a world record holder in the 200 backstroke, Martin Lopez Ribeiro, fastest qualifier, 24-year-old swimmer from Spain. Trains, lives and works in the United States, however. And there's Martin Harris, who lowered the British record in the heats this morning. Harris from Waltham Forest in London. Goes in at lane number five. Time he set this morning, 55.90. That's Thomas Deutsch from Hungary. He's a Hungarian record holder and fifth in the last European Championships in this event. There's Emmanuel Merisi from Italy. He's Italian champion, been that champion three times and runs in the 200 backstroke here. And there's the second of the two British swimmers through to the final. 18-year-old Adam Ruckwood set his personal best time this morning of 56.79. So let's hope we can get a medal from one of the British swimmers. But that man there in lane number four, Martin Lopez Zubero from Spain. The steel bar underneath the blocks, they'll pull themselves up towards those starting blocks and then launch themselves back. They're now under starter's orders. And Drew was saying earlier that Harris really committed himself and he's going to have to go some now because what a start Selkov down in lane number two got. Also, Lupez Zubero got a tremendous start. So it looks like Selkov is really trying to commit himself to this race. He must be favorite. But here comes Harris in the middle of the picture with Lopez Zubero coming up to the 50. Who's going to turn first? Well, Selkov doing what he did in the 200. Took everybody by surprise by heading out with a tremendous start. And there, excellent butterfly under the water and into the lead but Lopez Zubero having a challenge on the shorter 100 event at 25 to go Lopez Zubero looks as if he's going for gold well he's a tough competitor he knows how to finish hard Selkov is beginning to tire can he hold on for silver Lopez Zubero should get the goal Harris coming through now will Harris get the silver for Great Britain we'll have to check and see no Selkov gets the silver Harris gets the bronze and Lopez Zubero as you saw quite clearly won the gold medal so, we've had to wait a long time for a medal from Great Britain in that. Harris, well, does he believe he's done it, or did he think he did better? I think... Here with 56.26, Thomas Deutsch lowered the, uh, the Hungarian record to 55.97, and of course Martin Harris' is own 55.75 for a British record. So very competitive, at least at national terms. Certainly a very, very close race in European terms. Uh, still a little way to go for world terms, but we're getting there in men's backstroke. Should be interesting tomorrow in the 4x100 medley relay, Drew. Now Britain has got a, an excellent chance of winning gold in that because, of course, on breaststroke we've got... Back to Sheffield, and it's the final race on this session with a, a sixth final session here. In Denmark, we'll have uh, Jakobsen. Mancius, Skov and Jensen. In lane two, probably the real favourites of this event, Sandra Volker, Sylvia Garash, Bettina Ostrovska and Franziska van Amsik. In three, the Swedish team with Al Schammer, Jeltner, Stromberg and Olofsson. In lane four, qualifying fastest from the heat. Tremendous cheer from the British crowd here, Cathy Osher, Jamie King, Nicola Goodwin and Karen Pickering make up the Great Britain team. In lane five for Russia, Shivanovskaya, Nikitina Kirichenko and Mesheryakova. And that's a very, very powerful team as well. All medal winners here this week in some way or another. Vigarani, 
Dalevali, Tochini and Vianini. Very experienced Italian team there. Maybe not quite so fast, but certainly experienced. In lane seven for France, Miraceneu, Leblanc, Catherine Plavinsky, the gold medal winner from 100 Fly, and Julie Blaise. And in eight for the Netherlands, it is Van de Verde, Bans, Inge de Braun, and Karen Brinet. Again, two of those swimmers on Fly and Free, very experienced, coming from medals in the Seoul Olympics. And there you have the teams for the 4x100 medley relay. David. Usher there who will be, Kathy Usher will be swimming the backstroke. Very important that she gets a good start. She's got to go close to the British record if we've got to get any hope of getting our breaststroke through. Yes, Kathy Usher under pressure because there's 61 swimmers beside her. That's Shivanovskaya of Russia and she's already into a very early lead. And Sandra Volker in the uh, lane number two. Just out of shot at the moment is also something very, very powerful. Volker and Shivanovskaya had a tremendous battle in the 100 backstroke. And they're out there in the lead on this medley relay. So Volker just slightly in the lead as we come to the 50. And Volker really going out very hard that first 50. Determined maybe to uh, have her revenge on the Vesayskaya from Russia who was the silver medalist. But that's Osher. And the leader is definitely the Germans, not lane four. There's the two leaders. No doubt about it. Volker is going very, very hard. But as Shevinskaya comes through for the Russian team, well, they're going to get a lead after the backstroke. Volker beginning to tie now. In for the Russians goes Nikitina for Russia. She's great on the breaststroke. And in for the Germans goes Gerash. So these two setting an early pace for the rest of the field to follow. And Great Britain, after the backstroke, were in sixth position. So Jamie King in for Great Britain is going to have to really work in this. First place is Russia. Second is Germany. And third right now, well, there's not much between France and Sweden. And this is a great battle here. Nikatina, the 200-meter breaststroke gold medalist against Garash, the 100-meter gold medalist. And Garash now came out of that turn really well, really used the underwater, and is beginning now to stretch to a slight lead. But Nikitina gave her a tremendous battle in the 100, so Germany versus Russia. Nikitina there, from our position, we saw her looking across the pool. That takes her attention off the swim, but she's obviously worried about how much Garash can take off her on the 50 breaststroke. And there is... Jamie King there for Great Britain, struggling to hold us into bronze medal position, but it's Germany, followed by Russia, followed by perhaps Great Britain, yes, just ahead of the Italians. So what a swim from Jamie King on the breaststroke. Gets the British team up to bronze medal position. Now we've got the butterfly leg, as you see. The Italians also doing well. Toshini in from Italy. Nicola Goodwin, who swam so well earlier today on the butterfly. But without a doubt, the Germans ever so strong. And they've got Ustrowski swimming the butterfly for them. In second place, it's still Russia. Kirichenko on the butterfly. So the Germans extending the lead. The Russians still holding on to that silver medal position. There are now three teams in third position or third equal, and that's Sweden, Great Britain, and Italy, with Flewinski from France way up at the top of the picture, just coming through now. The French girl who's so strong on the 100 butterfly, who won the individual race, well, she's made a real impression on the field. But Germany go now with Van Alsik on the front crawl. Russia go in second. Kirinchenko over. And in third position, well, there's not He's all alone. This is where toughness counts. He's going into the wall. Is he going to get it? 159.50. Just outside. Event now in more than one way. It's the 50 freestyle for women. So it's the top sprint event for them. In lane one, Martina Morovkova, silver medalist in 103 on Tuesday. Swimming for Slovakia. Lane two, the 25-year-old, oldest in the field, Katrin Plavinsky, gold medalist in the 100 fly. She has the fastest, best time in the field of the 50 freestyle. Swimming for France. In lane three, Angela Postma, a surprise to everyone, 
including the Dutch supporter. She's the Dutch runner-up in the 50 freestyle. In lane four, Franziska Van Amzik. World short course record holder in this event. Already won five golds and one silver medal here. And going for another gold in the 50 freestyle. In lane five, Natalia Mesheryakova from Russia. Sixth in the Olympic Games in 92. Fourth in the 100 freestyle. So she's definitely a sprinter. 25-4-7 best. In lane six, it's Linda Olofsson. You hear tremendous support from a very tight Swedish team here. They've given each other great encouragement all through the championship. She's a Swedish record holder. In lane seven, Inge de Brown, bronze medalist in 91, eighth in the Olympic Games. Just not swimming, just exactly to form Inge de Brown, but for Netherlands, she's in lane seven. And in lane eight, Judith Draxler, who's already had two 50 freestyles. She had to swim, um, a swim off against Simone Osegus of Germany, representing Austria there in lane eight, completes the lineup. Center of the pool there, the German cap of Franziska Van Amdek. And she has tremendous distance behind her. Can she come down to 50 freestyle? All in a line at five to 10 meters. And already breaking in lane three, Angela Postma, the 22-year-old from the Netherlands. And then Van Amdek's coming through. Is she going to do it? The Swede Olofsson's there as well. The pink hat of Meshirakova. It's lane number four. Franziska Van Amzik taking another gold medal with a challenge from the Swede. But is Van Amzik on the touch? 25-53. Just outside the 25-5 of the championship. Second place looks as if it went to Olofsson, the Swede. They'll be delighted. And Inge de Brown at last, perhaps for Netherlands, coming through in third place. And a bronze medal with 25-86. But that was swift swimming. And I can pick him, big bet. And I'm sick, 25-5-3. All of a sudden, 25-6-7. So very close. And third, as Drew says, Inge de Bruin. Nice to see her finally picking up a medal. Her time, 25.8. Live in Sheffield at the European Championships. As, uh, the 1,500 meters is just underway. And they've just finished 100 meters. And in the lead, there you can see that nice... Uh, bird's eye view of uh, the man in lane number four that's uh, Jörg Hoffman being closely followed by lane number five Logvinov from the Ukraine but let me give you the whole of the eight swimmers or all of the eight swimmers in this final in lane number one we've got Mik Novitz from Belirius season one in lane two Madsen from Slovenia in lane three we have Pito Rabinski from uh, Poland and in lane four, we already mentioned the leader, Jörg Hoffman. That's him in shot there with a rather sort of ragged stroke, but very, very effective. Lane five, also mentioned, is Logvinov from Ukraine. And in lane number six, Siciliano from Italy. Lane seven, we have Sebastian Weiss from Dresden in Germany. And in lane eight, uh, we have Bensi from Italy. So the swimmer is just coming up to the 200 meters. And as expected, Jörg Hoffman, the world champion, over the 400 and the 1500 meters leading quite clearly so this is a fairly long race 30 lengths of the pool 1500 meters the longest race in uh, all of swimming here the longest for the women's of course is the 800 and whilst the swimmers just ease into their stroke and get underway just like to uh, tell you we received a, a letter here from uh, mrs christine shaw saying how much she's enjoyed the swimming from uh, eurosport and asking a question about a uh, product that was mentioned and uh, called Ceridan, where if she could get it and uh, if she writes to me at the English Amateur Swimming Association, that's David Wilkie, uh, that's Loughborough English Amateur Swimming Association, will certainly send us some information on that vitamin that improves all the circulation problems. But no circulation problems with Jörg Hoffmann, the mighty swimmer from Germany, Coming now to the 300 meters, Andrew, do you think uh, he can be beaten in this race? He really looks uh, quite outstanding. Still got Loginov on there, but he's beginning to really stamp his authority on this race, is Hoffman. Yes, I think at this level, uh, a lead like that so early on, it shows that maybe Hoffman's making an attempt on some kind of positive swim. Um, his best is 1450.36. Now that was set uh, back in 91, he's a bit older, but more experienced. He's got to obviously 
get under, well under the minute for each 100 if he's going to go under that magic 15 minute barrier. And there still aren't too many swimmers who have gone under the 50 minutes for 1500 freestyle. But Hoffman looks in great command here. Um, there are about four swimmers who have really lost touch and uh, three other swimmers who are there or there about, but it's hard to see anybody moving up in Hoffman uh, when he's in this kind of mood. He's a very tall swimmer, as David said, a little bit ragged on the actual stroke technique, but he's got tremendous background. The legs just move up and down at the back. You can see no splash there at all at the back. They're under the surface. They're moving up and down in rhythm with the arms, which helps him not only to coordinate the stroke, but also to keep the feet as high as possible without breaking the surface so that there is little drag on the human body as possible as it passes through the water. In second place, in lane five there, Evgeny Logvinov. But uh, just coming through after the turn two over in lane seven, Sebastian Wies there, the second German in this field of eight. And it was expected that they might take one and two. And uh, already they are showing that. And we're only coming up to the 400 mark. So Hoffman moving through, turning in 4.59, sorry, at 500 meters. So if he can't keep his concentration like me, he'll miscount this whole race. Swimming very near the lane ropes there, good shot off the aerial camera. You can see how straight and how wide the arms are, just setting up a little reaction in the legs, and he has to kick them up and down very slightly just to balance that. And in fact, they do lose concentration sometimes, and uh, I mean, you don't see it often in international meets because, of course, they've got uh, some uh, counters at the end of the pool which shows exactly how many laps they've got to do. So Hoffman would have taken a look there, and he knows that now he's got 19 laps to do after he's finished that one. Now, he must be aware that uh, Sebastian Weiss in lane seven is still in touch in this race. Hoffman way off his uh, best time. Remember, this is a man that's uh, Olympic uh, bronze medalist in 92, but he's off that sort of form. He's some nine seconds off the time that he swam at the Olympic Games. Now, of course, at the Olympic Games, you've got a lot more pressure on you. You do tend to prepare yourself just a little bit better. You do tend to train just a little bit harder for that. Post-Olympic year, the swimmers do probably turn down a little bit. And uh, Hoffman's fitness, well, that's not necessarily in doubt, but he hasn't trained as hard as he would have done for the Olympic Games. So Weiss is in second position, some 10 meters behind, but uh, they're swimming, there's 17 laps to go, so uh, there's still plenty of time for Weiss in lane seven to catch up on the leader. Now we're uh, going down towards the turn and Hoffman breathing to the right hand side there you can see breathing to the right he will be aware of Vice on this length so when he's finishing he'll know exactly where Vice is so they come up to the 700 meter mark there'll be 800 meters to do after this as uh, your mathematics is as good as mine is so there's still plenty of time for Vice to to catch up the rest of the field, well, I think they're going to be dropped by these two men. Uh, Madsen from Slovenia is beginning to come through and uh, try and make a move on Weiss, but uh, I don't know whether he's got the, the sort of the fitness. He's more of a, a 400 freestyle swimmer. And uh, it's still Hoffman who's really swimming this race on his own. He's committed himself from the beginning. He's led all the way, 15 laps to go, halfway through now. And if you see on the push-off, he goes straight in the stroke. No underwater kicks like you see maybe in the 200 and 400. And uh, there you can see his teammate Sebastian Weiss in shot now, not that far behind, probably seven meters behind. So Weiss may be beginning to maybe try and push, and also in lane number two, just out of shot, but should be coming through any minute, Madsen from Slovenia. So that's the 800 meters, Drew. They turn there, and it looks like Vice is. We'll check for you only now three and a half seconds behind. So we'll check again at the next 100 and see if that 3.5 lead of Hoffman's has been eaten into. Yes, in fact, uh, Vice does look as if he's slowly but surely cutting the ground 
of the distance between him and Hoffman. But remember, Hoffman has uh, another six foot six to add on to that. Six foot five, six foot six, because it's all about the touch. But you know, this race is all about trying to get into a very, very personal and individual pace. And on the evening, on the day, you have to be sure that the rest has been right, the training has been right, that you are on song, you're on on target for that pace. Hoffman is repping very, very evenly. But uh, down out of camera shot at the moment, in lane two, Madchenov, Slovenia, they are coming now to the turn in the white hat with a red and black stripe there he is a very powerful looking swimmer a much a much more like a, a 400 shorter distance event but he's coming through and he's beginning to put a little bit of contact with vice who's way over in lane seven so uh, vice just not really eating into the lead while he took a tenth of a second off and it's going to take him a long time if he's only going to whittle away a tenth every 100 but there's only a second now between Madsen, who's in third position, and Weiss. So uh, Madsen beginning to make a move. So uh, Hoffman now has got to be aware of men on the right and the left of him. But I think they're just a little bit too far. There's uh, nine laps to go once they go down to the other side. Ten laps after they turn here to swim. And Hoffman not tiring at all. He can keep this stroke up all day. Let's see what he turns in. Comes round now. Turns while he's at 10.06. Vice turning. And he turns at 10.989. So that's still the three and a half seconds. And Madsen is only now 0.5 of a second behind Vice. So Vice being able to look down to the pool as he turns to the right-hand side, he'll be able to see Madsen there because, as we've mentioned before during the commentary in Eurosport, that a lot of these swimmers, in fact, all of them in this final, wear goggles, and they are aware exactly where the rest of the swimmers are on this field. So with nine laps to go from Hoffman, it looks like he's uh, going to win this 1500. It's a little bit maybe premature to say that, but he hasn't changed his stroke. He looks very comfortable. He's... Uh, uh, he's got that sort of fairly erratic stroke, but look at the power of it. Look at their hands as they reach forward. He sends the press down with the palm of his hands all the way back to the hip. So it's very efficient. The leg kick sort of uh, kicking to the side, especially with that, that right leg. But the power on his stroke is certainly down to the arms. And we'll check to see who turns second. Well, there's nothing in it now between Weiss and Madsen. In fact, Madsen has moved into second position. So it looks like Weiss has uh, gone off the challenge. And now Hoffman has got to worry about a new challenge. It's going to come from Madsen in lane number two. But there's still three seconds between these two swimmers. And Hoffman, the experienced swimmer, 23 years old now is able, no doubt, to handle this pressure. He's a European record holder. He's world champion, third in the Olympic Games. So he, he knows what pressure is about. And he was in that great final in Barcelona when that Australian swam an unbelievable time of 14 minutes, 43 seconds, a time that uh, five years ago people would have thought an impossibility for a man to go that fast in 1,500 meters. But there, uh, someone has done it. And uh, Hoffman not that far behind world record. Seven seconds in terms of best time. But in this race, sadly, they're going to be way off that world record pace. They won't uh, get under that magic 15-minute barrier. So Hoffman there in the lead. And actually moving through nice and steadily. Good control from Maschen of uh, Slovenia. Fourth in the European Championship two years ago. Sixth in the Olympic Games. 23-year-old. He's got experience too. And he's uh, played a nice, uh, patient game. Didn't start off too well, and then he's just come through the field. In first place then, it's Hoffman on the turn. Then down there in lane two for Slovenia. Then it's the German, second German, Weiss. In fourth place there, in lane five, it's Logvinov of the U Ukraine. And then three swimmers all together. Bensi and Siciliani. And Albinski all together and way back in the field. In lane one, it's Mikinovets of Belarus, who's trailing nearly uh, 20, 30 metres behind Hoffman. Hoffman just getting his turn a little bit wrong there. We're getting really close to the wall. Lost the concentration. And Maschin has managed to catch a couple of metres because Hoffman almost swam into the boards there. And he's looking really tight, David. 
Well, he tried to take a look over at Madsen to see what uh, the movement was there. And Madsen now, there's two, just under 200 metres to go, is beginning to push. That sort of turn, at that distance, you know, they've swum uh, 1,300 metres. It's sure to put somebody off, and a mistake that somebody that Hoffman shouldn't make. Probably has spoiled his rhythm, but there he's back into the rhythm again. Madsen certainly is beginning to make the move. An intelligent swim. He's crawling up uh, to about three metres behind. There you can see there's 75, 125 metres to go. Hopping right over on the lane rope. That's not very good. There's Madsen coming right in the left-hand side of your screen. Now Hoffman knows with 100 metres to go, he's got a battle on. I should think uh, another poor turn from him again. But I think he should be able to hang on because Madsen is certainly going to be tired. But you never know um, what Madsen's got to down the last 50 metres. But he also looks fairly tired. And I think Hoffman should be able to hold on to win gold here. And Hoffman not really looking as comfortable as he did in the centre section of the race. Vice coming back in lane 7 as well. He's coming back into contention for the silver. So, 50 metres to go. Hoffman turning. Then matching. Closely behind his Vice. That's the way it's been for the last four or five hundred. Now, can Madsen bring anything back in the last 25 metres? Well, he's certainly going to try. He's into a six-beat kick. Hoffman still on the two-beat kick. He knows that uh, Weiss and Madsen are going to really move the last 25 metres. He's done enough, though, in the first 1,400 metres to break the challenge. He's going to come through, but who's going to get silver? Because Weiss is certainly challenging. Hoffman gets a goal. The silver goes. Well, it goes to Madsen but that was close and Weiss's time should be up on our scoreboard but it hasn't actually made it through to the computer yet, yet. and uh, on the computer it actually gives uh, Logvinov from Ukraine third position but no doubt uh, in my mind who got third that was Sebastian Weiss in fact he nearly uh, stole the silver from Nation. so technically a fairly straightforward race for Hoffman Went off fairly hard, the first 500, the first third of the race, wore down the challenge of Vice. Vice tried to gladly the finish, the uh, challenge of the battle between uh, Madsen and Vice, but it certainly was very close. But the computer actually confirmed that Vice gets the silver and Madsen the bronze. So you never know in a 1500 meters, sometimes uh, somewhere along the line, must be indebted to his coach. And all the times were close from the heat. Lane 1, Agata Jankowska from Poland. Bit of a surprise qualifier, setting a personal best this morning, and a Polish record in the heat. There, Kathy Osher. She has ruled supreme over the backstroke in England and Great Britain over a long number of years. Eight times the English national champion, former GB record holder. 24 year old now. Lane three, young 15 year old Kathleen Stoltz, the European junior champion in 92 for Germany. In lane four, going back to back with the 200 fly, it's Christina Egazegi going for her fourth individual event gold medal. She's the double world Olympic and European champion and looks to be absolutely untouchable in this to 200 back. In five, Lorenza Vigarani from Italy, one of two Italians in this final. Seven times the national champion of Italy, 23, ranked six in the world coming into this event. Six, Francesca Savalayo, Mediterranean Games champion, set a personal best to get into this final. So plenty of commitment from Francesca. In seven, the swimmer who challenged Egazegi on the 100 backstroke. Very tight finish, remember. Nina Shivanovskaya, 15 years of age, from Russia. The 100 back European junior champion in 92. And in lane eight, Joanne Deakins. Wait to hear the Sheffield roar for the Great Britain record holder. Tenth in the Olympic Games, fifth in the European Championships two years ago. From Coventry. Great Britain, 20-year-old Joanne Deacon. So there's the final lineup for the 200 backstroke, all ready to go. The girls just waiting the signal from the referee to enter the water. There's no uh, delay allowed in the water. You have to get in. 
I don't think anyone will touch her in this race. She could win it by uh, four or five metres. Very rarely do we see the false start in the back stroke, although we've had one at the championships. But they are just easing into good start. There's a very positive commitment from lane seven, Shivanovskaya. We think that's where the main challenge will come. But it's whether Shivanovskaya has the background to challenge Egazegi. Well, in the 100 metres backstroke, she was ever so strong. She's only 15 years of age, so we haven't seen her uh, too often in the 200 metres backstroke. But so maybe I should change that four or five metres that Egasegi is going to win by, because leading up the first 50 is Shivanovsky from Russia. A very fast time, really setting the pace here, 30.45, so she's under Egasegi's world record pace. So she could be a lady in the future to challenge Egasegi. Egasegi, there she is in shot, just getting into the rhythm of the stroke. She will be aware of a challenge coming from lane number seven from Shivanovskaya. But uh, it's the second hundred that's going to really count. And this young 15-year-old swimmer from Russia, well, she certainly has committed herself. And she's going to give Egasegi a scare at the hundred because she's there and thereabout. Egazegi just takes it on the rollover in the turn, 103.33. It's outside World Record play. Pace, it's about gold and silver. And Egazegi now just moves very strongly in, in that last 25 metres off the 100 into Superbus. But going well in third place is Lorenzo Vigarani from Italy. Italy looking maybe for a bronze medal here off this. And there'll be a challenge from Kathleen Stoltz, the young 15-year-old from Germany. But there it's Egazegi. Watch this. Smoothly into that rollover turn. Good drive, couple of fly kicks there to take it up to the surface, and already now three or four meters into the lead. Now they say swimmers, when they get tired, they've got a monkey on her back, but I think Shivanskaya's got a whole zoo on her back because she has certainly dropped away. So Egasegi is going to win this quite easily. In second position, it's the Italian Vigarani, lane five. Kathy Osher from Great Britain, well, she's in fifth. And the bronze medal might just be taken by Shivanskaya, but Stolte from Germany might get it too. But no doubt about who's going to get the goal. Egasegi finishes easily. The silver, who's going to get the silver? It's the Italian, we think, Vigarani. And Shivanskaya drew what a tremendous first hundred, but faded so much in the second part of the race. Well, we spotted it well. Did she have the endurance? She's a tremendous sprinter, did she? And what do they want to see? They want to see that board, to see that kind of result confirmed. Egazegi with the gold, 209.12. That's just fractionally faster than she was in the heat. Vigarani with the silver, 211.94. Shivanovskaya with the bronze for Russia. I remember, uh, Drew, you pointed out very well. One from Russia, Mesha Robakova. 22-year-old swimmer, six in the Olympic Games and 53 style, so she's got plenty of speed. Time this morning, 56.95. In lane number two, Gita Jensen from Denmark, only 21 years of age, and she was fifth in the last European Championships in 91. Danish record holder. There's Pawinski. French record holder. Time this morning, 56.81. French record holder at 55.11. And this is a girl they've all come to see, Van Elmsick, only 15 years of age from Germany. European junior champion, World Cup 93 champion, and also world record holder short course. In lane number five, Martina Morakova from Slovakia. Improved her time this morning down to 56.19. As Dubrescu from Romania. Looks slightly nervous as she gets the goggles on. Karen Pickering in lane seven, having an early bath. Looks in good shape. In fact, she always looks in excellent shape, Karen Pickering. Great cheer from the crowd. He looks like good competitor. And lane number eight, Elena Svensson, one of the Swedish swimmers we were talking about earlier. Well prepared, both psychologically, and a lot of those uh, Swedish swimmers using the new product from Sweden called Ceradrin, which does aid in the circulation. But there we have the final of the women's 100 meters freestyle. Drew, pick a favorite. I don't really have to. The, the world has picked a favorite for this event. 
that young lady, Franziska Van Amstig. This is her first chance of a possible seven gold medals in the European Championship. And at her press conference yesterday, she was saying, I want to swim well in the team events, but I hope to be on the podium for the medals. I think she knows she's going to be on the podium for the medals. And a good start by all eight uh, ladies in the final here. But it's the blue cap of uh, Van Almsick in lane number four that shows fire. And what a sprinter she is. Also going well in lane number one, Mechurikova from Russia. And this could be an interesting race. But look at Van Almsick with the dark cap on. Approaching the first 50 meters, she's going to turn first, there's no doubt about that. Let's see her time, 26.62, she's well on her way to getting a, her first gold medal, but there's still 45 meters to go. Yes, Michelle Akulva, the 50 specialist, showing early, but it's Van Amzik leading the women's 100 freestyle at 75 meters. Beautiful, elegant, really an astounding talent at her age, now heading for home, and what's the time going to be like? While well, the world record is 54.48 by the American Thompson, she's not going to get that just outside it. My goodness, 54.57. What a start to tonight's swimming, just off the world record, but under the European and the championship record. Drew, she is a, a class swimmer. She's a, she's a great find, and she looks great. She's not like one of the big hulks that we used to expect from Eastern Germany when they used to swim as GDR. She's outside her own British record, so it, you know that was a good swim for her. Uh, De Brescu, 56, 26. That's another good swim, uh, you know, for her, getting, you know, getting closer to their record of 55-4. But uh, it was all about could Van Amzik convert all that pressure and focus and attention into a wonderful swim, and she's just done that so elegantly. And I think that uh, this is going to be probably the hook for the whole championships. It's not to make too much of her and, and not enough of others, but it's just that at her age and with her... Felicetti from Italy, qualified 6-3-1-2. From France, we're going to find Stephanie Vossart, French record holder, qualified 62-8-9. Lane number three, Kornev, Andrei Kornev from Russia. Uh, he's a former European junior champion and uh, set a best time in the heats to qualify. And there we have the man of the moment, the world record holder, the new world record holder, and the 100 breaststroke drew the first man under 61 seconds, only by 500 of a second, but he's under 61. Drew, it's going to be some race against this guy, Nick Gillingham. Nick Gillingham, who always swims well in Sheffield. Maybe a little bit surprised to see Guttler go so well. But he's psyched, he's ready for this. And what a cheer he gets from the crowd in Sheffield. They know Nick likes swimming here. They want to see him win. Can he do it? First shaved head we've seen. Zubrushke from Belgium. 62-61 in the heat this morning. Kirnichuk in Russia, another Russian. He's in lane number seven, 63-02. So 63, that's uh, some way off uh, Guttler's time. And Bonica in lane number eight from Germany in a time of 103-15. Drew, it's going to be a, a tremendous race. Do you think Guttler can be beaten by Nick? Well, I think the big question really is, uh, has, you know, Guttler did swim quite hard this morning. And having been there and done it, there's a can't go for it. But Guttler is stronger on the 100 event. Well, just look at the size of him. The man that Adrian Morehouse beat to a gold medal in the Olympic Games may get his revenge on the Brit here. And Guttler with the sort of pink and uh, yellow cap on in lane number four. Gillingham has to stay with him. He said he's going to come down hard the last 50. Nick likes to swim the 100 just on the shoulder, but Guttler is really going for it. And this could be a mistake. Guttler could be going into Nick's little game plan. 
but Nick cannot let him get too much of a lead. Now, Gutler is coming up to the 50, Drew. He's got about a half a second lead over Nick Gillingham in about fourth, fifth position. Yes, the tactical battle here is important. Gutler went very, very hard there, and he seemed to tire in the last. Nick Gillingham, with that endurance from the 200, may be able to peg it back, but it certainly is Gillingham against Gutler here. Lane four, lane five. The white hat of Britain coming up as we get into the last 10 meters. Well, Gutler is tying up, but he's only got 10 meters to go. Nick's left it just a little bit too late. Gutler's going for the wall. Could another world record be on? Gutler hits the wall. Slower than this morning. Never mind. He says to himself, I won the gold. 61.04. So another superb swim. A swim from the front. Nick, using his tactics as only Nick knows how, went out about a half a second slower, tried to pull Gutler back the last 50 meters, but he just couldn't. Um, we're always looking for getting under the minute for short course. Now we're starting to look at a minute long course, the 50 meter pull. So Gillingham with uh, probably some disappointment, but I think what's interesting is that he was able, you know, to swim that a little bit harder, a little bit faster, and it felt as if he was challenging, although when you start to look at it and analyze it in the, that lovely slow motion, uh, you can see that Gutler really had the race under a lot of control. Well, they are a team that uh, 